Players will go to extreme lengths when money is on the line. People are so shameless, dude. And competitive Valorant is no exception. Pros may have been cheating their way to the top of the VCT since its inception. These are the most notorious scandals thus far. We kick things off with an instant at the pinnacle of Valorant's competition. The inaugural VCT champions in Berlin 2021 was a proving ground for many players looking to win the lion's share of $350,000. Brazilian team Vivo Key were not the favourites to win by any stretch, but in a group play game against eventual champions Ascends, they shocked the world. Brazil golpea duro. Brazil canta y baila samba do Janeiro. Yes, que es la victoria. A 2-1 victory helps them progress to the next round. One win away from making the playoffs. Little did they know, one of their players had made a play that would drastically change the outcome of the match. For six rounds, Cypher player J. Hauer used a known Cypher cam exploit at the A site of Breeze. Yeah, from either of those two teams that are still playing later on today. Sen slowly making their way into the site. The camera is going to get all of the information from Joe. I reckon that's going to pick up a couple. Spike planted. Plant at least. Realistically, now it's all about damage and heat. It's not going to allow for any of it. Just popping heads as he goes, leaving killers. There's the last man standing. Absolutely no chance for him here at a blade. Vivo Keed essentially jumped on the fence and jumped up and put the cam here. So that is a real exploit, okay? The camera placed in such a way that enemies can't even see it due to issues with the textures. Riot Games had made it explicitly clear this was against the rules, and previous instances typically resulted in a forfeit. Nonetheless, Jay Howe did not back down and continued to abuse it to help his team win the map. A competitive ruling stated as a result, Vivo Keed forfeited the six rounds they used it in, thereby losing the map and the series. But seeing something like this, an exploit being abused like this at Valorant Champions, and then Riot bringing the hammer down and making this team forfeit rounds at a tournament like this is crazy. Unfortunately, they proceeded to lose the next match against X10, exiting the tournament in joint last place. They got owned because of their own decision making to use that band cam. Let's just say it. That was yes. their decision to end up using. The onus is on them and they did crumble. While the community generally agrees that Vivo Keed should have been punished for what may have been an attempted cheating scandal or merely an accidental use, many also believe that Riot should have just fixed the bug, which had been known about for many months. But Vivo Keed were not the only team to use an illegal exploit. At the lock-in tournament at the start of 2023, T1 faced off against hometown team Furia. This was the first ever major tournament in Brazil, and Furia were determined to get the win for their fans. It's the hometown heroes versus the plucky underdogs. What happens in this game is anyone's guess, but one thing is for certain, it is gonna be freaking awesome. Perhaps though, not a great idea to break the rules in the process. Furia took a 1-0 lead as things went to map 2 on Icebox, and at the start of round 5, Killjoy player Khalil placed a Nano Swarm at the centre of the A site, a spot explicitly listed in the VCT handbook as an exploit. The molly was never even required, as T1 decided to funnel into the B site instead in a round they eventually lost. However, following the end of the round, a technical timeout was activated and Furia were notified and penalized with the round loss. For all of you who have been waiting, uh, I am being told that an illegal Killjoy Molly was placed by Furia and it was well within the rulebook so they knew um, <laughs> that it was not a Molly that should have been placed, it was placed anyway. Because of that, a round will be removed from Furia's score. So we're gonna get all you all back into the action. The score is one to four in favor of Furia. Chat, Chat is saying like, why don't they, they fix it? But I, I feel like it's probably just a thing of like, Furia's they probably haven't figured out how to fix it yet maybe. Slow. So like it's not that simple and just let you know hey you can't do this oh it's kind of because you can't see it or anything yeah right? it, yeah you can't even break it yeah i guess you could shock the box or something Wait, or there's no way that guy actually put that molly and thought it was okay intentional cheating from furia to hope they would get away with an unfair advantage or merely an accident despite this the brazilians remained undeterred as they closed out the map to win the series 2-0 
So far we have discussed mainly borderline cases, but some are far more blatant. Riot Games has not shied away from providing tournament support all across the globe, from Latin America to China and Vietnam. A Vietnamese player by the name of Nom Senpai was making waves in the region due to his flashy plays on the jet. Headshot. One enemy remaining. Oh. One, 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 one. <laughs> As the VCT 2022 Stage 1 Vietnam Open qualifiers looms, this was his chance to make a real name for himself. And Nom Senpai did exactly that, but for all the wrong reasons. With his team up 12-9 on Haven in a qualifying game, he was caught cheating red-handed. In this clip, his crosshair suspiciously flicks to Astra at C-Link, who is completely behind the wall. But Nom Senpai continued to trace the Astra, making it clear that he had an aimbot or triggerbot active, an offence clearly stated against in the rulebook. The repercussions were swift and drastic. Riot Games announcing he will be banned from all tournaments for 36 months, that's three years, beginning January 26, 2022. Riot have made it clear that maintaining the competitive integrity of their tournament is a top priority, but that doesn't stop some from trying. But Nom Senpai wasn't the only player from Asia to come under controversy. Singapore Valorant is known for having a strong talent pool with such names as Jing, Benkai and Egoist. Juicy is another player who seems destined for success. Despite being just 16 years of age, he helped Bleed Esports win the Ascension Tournament in 2023 in the Pacific region. This tournament granted Bleed a spot in the coveted VCT Pacific League in 2024, competing against the likes of Paper Rex and DRX, and recently confirming the signing of 2022 Esports Player of the Year Yay into their roster. It feels amazing because I've been waiting literally two years for this moment. Ah. However, Juicy will not be eligible to play due to age restrictions and is now joining fellow countryman Jing in military service. But what many people don't know is Juicy was once hit with the official Riot ban hammer. Back in 2021, Timid Monster Gaming (TMG) officially qualified for the Southeast Asia Masters, taking down Team SMG in the Grand Finals of Challengers 3. However, their spot was later taken away from them after a player from TMG had violated their anti-cheat policy. That player was confirmed to be Juicy, who was only 14 at the time. Juicy made it clear this ban was a mistake, and later confirmed he was officially cleared by Riot, and thus will be able to compete upon his inevitable return. Well, I just got cleared by Riot, not a cheater. Ooh. Welcome to the famous Help Sewer controversy, the first big scandal and arguably the most talked about in the VCT so far. As Masters Reykjavik was confirmed as the first major tournament in 2022, only two slots were up for grabs in the North American region. In the first open qualifier, TSM were up against T1 in losers round 4 in a high stakes game. It was T1 who drew first blood on map 1 of Split with a comfortable 13-7 advantage and their momentum continued to map 2 where they took a sizeable 8-4 lead. But as the game came to a halt to switch sides, something happened that would be remembered in Valorant lore forever. TSM's Sabrosa made a bold claim that T1's coach Dennis was typing and probably talking to them mid-game. A pretty serious allegation. He tweeted, I'm playing against a team that has their coach typing and probably talking to the mid-game GG 6v5. And so this explodes. These allegations were investigated during map two by a Riot employee, and it didn't take long for the forfeit hammer to swing down hard. T1 were officially disqualified for breaking a rule which states that during the match, communication by a player should be limited to other players on the team. When they got disqualified, he tweeted, yawning emoji, we won the first map 13-7. Which is an incredible thing to tweet when your coach has cheated. <laughs> Do you not find that to just be yeah. an insane thing to tweet? It is insane. With the community curious to know what coach Dennis typed, TSM's Wardell soon gave us an answer. Help Sua in all chat, revealing his intentions to the entire lobby. A call out for a location which connects a site entrance to the back of mid. With no communication allowed from the coach outside of timeouts, this was enough to warrant a full forfeit for T1, which not everybody agreed with. 
Many were also reminded of the infamous iBuyPower match-fixing scandal from CSGO, also involving Steel, that happened some eight years earlier. I need help serious, guys. Thrifty! <laughs> But Dennis wasn't the only coach to come under scrutiny for his antics. Over in the EMEA region, G2 were up against Team Vitality in a closed qualifier match in 2022, and G2's Nuki made a spectacular play in round 10 on Fracture. Instantly be calling a save with Nuki, but well, he's a different man altogether. He'll drop down and take the first, his health's about to reset on back up, he's avoiding the fight for now, the res, but it's a weapon for twice! Nuki no! goes no! clear, and G2 take a fourth! Little did he know, however, by posting this clip publicly, people started to notice that Coach Pipson could be heard in the background celebrating. <laughs> Accidentally making this information known was a grave error, and as previously mentioned, this is strictly against the rules. However, on this occasion, Riot did not punish G2, and Pipson later came out with a statement apologising for his actions, assuring everybody it would not happen again. While there was no direct evidence that Pipson was providing clues or information to his team, as in the T1 vs TSM case, many still suspected foul play on G2's part, leaving the community widely confused about the inconsistency of these respective rulings. VCT Game Changers is a new Riot program which supplements the main competitive circuit by creating new opportunities and exposure for women and other marginalized genders. However, this golden opportunity provided by Riot has sparked a barrage of controversies since its inception. Every few months, a new scandal arises that outdoes the previous. The biggest controversy so far occurred at Game Changers Series 3 in October 2023. The stakes were as high as they could get with slots to GC champions on the line. In losers round two, it was a team called Newt Newt up against complexity with the loser to be eliminated. Newt Newt got off to a great start with some suspiciously excellent shooting, but complexity tied things up to take it to a map three decider. What viewers watching live didn't know though is that map three would never arrive. It was soon announced that a member of Newt Newt was detected by Riot anti-cheat. During the VCT Game Changer Series 3 match between Newt Newt and Complexity, Riot anti-cheat confirmed competitive integrity was compromised by Newt Newt. While no specific player was mentioned by Riot, it didn't take long for people to realize that Malibu was the culprit, who swiftly deactivated their account following the drama. Malibu basically came out of nowhere. Malibu's first tracked match was Supergirl Gamer Pro September 16th of this year. Malibu's teammate Zan made it clear that they only met just two weeks before GC3, and the rest of the team were apparently not aware of the cheating ongoing. With many suspicious clips that people believe to be indicative of wall hacks, one has to wonder how it was possible for a cheater to slip through the cracks of such a high profile qualifier especially given Malibu's submitted profile picture was quite clearly generated by AI, and provably so. I'm surprised she's not a, like a popular Valorant streamer because she's conventionally attractive and she's really good at Valorant and that's generally two big factors that might help a Valorant streamer. Well, it turns out the picture she submitted was fake. It was made by AI, and it was the picture submitted to the tournament organizers. Does anyone, like, it sounds like Malibu is like some anonymous person that no one knows that just put a random picture, just joined this team, and hacked. Here's what I say. I didn't cheat. I am trans, and the people closest to me know that is true, and that headshot thing was definitely troll as fuck. Ban was probably for ban evading, but I don't know. I should technically be unbanned by now. Either way, enjoy your laugh teams such as DSG's GC roster, who had been defeated by the cheater earlier in the tournament, wanted repercussions which could never arrive, and the reputation of Game Changers was only further tarnished. And when Newt Newt was essentially beating us, I was really impressed by the team as well as the player Malibu specifically because I never heard about her. Essentially, we were so close to beating the, the event winner and we were so close in beating the actual cheaters that I really do wonder how things might have gone if we weren't playing against 
Cheaters. Cheating in an official Riot Games tournament is one matter, but doing so in a school event is an entirely different story. On the 1st of January 2022, South Esports Club held a $50, that's right, $50 Valorant tournament for their students. The stakes were not exactly high by any means, but a player by the name of Mother Hunter decided to pull out all the stops to win his share of $10. Last round Most and uh, we lose is f absolutely broke with their five off strategy. Um, two of them won't be able to buy, and they're pulling out two Odins, I guess, to make up for the lack of gunfire. And, uh, what? What the fuck? Yo! No way! Cheater detected? Yo, cheater Yo, detected! Cheater detected. Yo, cheater no detected. way! And there we have it, how pros have abused game-breaking glitches, and significantly worse. Which of these do you consider to be cheating? Who do you think went too far? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this.